Why did the Indo-Europeans conquer large parts of the world? What was the change in conditions and technology on the West and Central Eurasian steppes that set the people living there on a track of conquest, in many cases obliterating the Neolithic and Chalcolithic civilizations in their path? In this review, we will look into the two core reasons that has been suggested for this enormous upheaval and we'll also look into the ancestry of people on the Western Eurasian steppes. Firstly, the domestication of the horse. So where and when was the horse domesticated? The Neolithic Bhutai culture of the Central Asian steppes provides the earliest archaeological evidence for horse husbandry, about 3500 BC. But the exact nature of early horse domestication remains controversial. In the paper, Ancient Genome Revisit the Ancestry of Domestic and Prevalsky Horses, in science, they generated 42 ancient horse genomes, including 20 from Bowtie, compared to 46 published ancient and modern horse genomes. The data indicates that the Prevalsky horses are the free-roaming descendants of horses herded at Bowtie and not truly wild horses. So other horses were the main source of the domestication stock over the past 4,000 years or more. They believe this to be related to the expansion of the Yamnaya culture pastoralis of the Pontic Caspian steppe. It is important to note that at this time sheep were herded on the steppe west of the Urals but not to the east. So on the central Eurasian steppe the people including at Bhutai are foragers. The Bhutai people domesticated horses and used it to hunt wild horses not as Yamnaya who in part used their horses to herd their flocks. The way we know that horses were ridden is through looking on the horse teeth that were worn down by the bit. From horse skeletons we know that perhaps already by 4500 BC on the western Eurasian steppes horses are ridden by humans. So why is horseback riding so important? Well, it makes herding more efficient. A herder on horse can herd more than twice the number of animals than on foot. So the herding population would, by the adaptation of horseback riding, facilitate doubling their flock sizes. Secondly, besides domestication of horses, we have the invention of the wheel and axle. That is the wagon that revolutionized the way people lived on the steppe. The first archaeological records of a wagon are from around 3500 BC. And then this invasion spread fast throughout West Eurasia. The first presence of wagons from the Pontic steppe were from about 3100 BC. Okay, so first we have the horse domestication, at least about 3500 BC. And with horses comes herding, scouting, long distance raiding. And then we have the invention of the wagon that revolutionizes steppe economies. Wagons were heavy bulk transport. Prior to the wagon, all archaeological sites on the steppe are along the rivers. With wagons and the horse, people move out onto the steppe itself. This is the formation of the Yamnaya culture. The Kurgan burials are begin to be built on the open steppes and river valleys are abandoned and people start to live nomadic lives in their wagons. The first known chariot is from the Near East, 1800 BC. But it is not the chariot that makes the horseback herders so efficient and superior to the much more populous farming communities of Europe and South Central Asia. Remember that this is tribal warfare, so it is all about raids, stealing livestock and horses from the raided party. With horses, the riding, raiding pastoralists can hit by surprise and get away unhurt. And if this raiding is done during harvesting of the crops, they can really disrupt the livelihood of the farming communities, which eventually are going to fall apart. And this is eventually also what happens. See my video, The Origins, the origins of the Indo-Europeans. So what about the genetic relationship between Jamnayas and the Bhutai people, the first domesticators of the horse. The paper, the first horse herders and their impact on early Bronze Age steppe expansions into Asia in science provides some clues. 
They've analyzed 74 ancient whole genome sequences from across Inner Asia and Anatolia and showed that bowtie people associated with the earliest horse husbandry derived from a hunter-gatherer population deeply diverged from Yamnaya. As previously mentioned, the Yamnayas were a mixture of primarily eastern hunter-gatherers with some Caucasian hunter-gatherer ancestry. Ancient North Eurasian lineages separated 15,000 years ago in the Upper Paleolithic from the eastern hunter-gatherer lineage to the west. For more on ancient North Eurasians, see my video with the same name. The deep population structure among the local population in Inner Asia around the Copper Age Bronze Age transition is in line with a distinct origin of central steppe hunter herders related to Bhutai of the central steppe and those related to Altai hunter gatherers of the eastern steppe. Furthermore, this population structure, which is best described as part of the ancient North Eurasian's meta population, persisted within Inner Asia from the Upper Paleolithic to the end of the Early Bronze Age. In the Baikal region, the results show that at least two genetic shifts occurred. Firstly, a complete population replacement of the Upper Paleolithic hunter-gatherers belonging to the ancient North Eurasian by early Neolithic communities of ancient East Asian ancestry. And second, an admixture event between the latter and additional members of the ancient North Eurasian clade, occurring during the 1500 year period that separates the Neolithic from the early Bronze Age. So the Bowtie, being the first to domesticate a horse, were not the ones destined to spread their genes across Europe and South Asia, but it is the Indo-European further to the west. And this is done in several stages. First, early Bronze Age steppe pastoralists, the Jamnaya, expand both to the east and west, forming the Corded Ware complex and Afanisievo archaeological cultures both carrying substantial amounts of Eastern and Caucasus hunter-gatherer ancestry. And from there, in the Late Bronze Age, Sintashta and Adropovo are formed, that besides the mentioned Eastern and, and Caucasus hunter-gatherer ancestry, can be distinguished by a genetic component acquired through admixture with European Neolithic farmers during the formation of the Corded Ware complex reflecting a secondary push from Europe to East through the forest steppe zone that eventually reaches India. And all of this is facilitated by animal husbandry, the domestication of the horse and the invention of the wheel and wagon. That is all for today. Thank you for listening. Till next time, I wish you all the best.